Executive Tamworth Borough Council on the 5th of April 2022. Uh, I'd first of all, like to uh, draw attention to the fact that we've got two new committee members this evening, although they're not brand new. They've both sat on planning before in the dim and distant past. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Councillor Richard Ford and Councillor Chris Cook uh, back to the committee and uh, thank uh, Councillor Thomas Jay uh, for his, uh, he's not here, but thank him for his uh, efforts on the committee over the previous months. Um, to the agenda then, item one, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies? I don't th think there are. There's, there is one, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's Councillor Box, isn't it? No, no. Councillor oh. Pritchard. Yeah. Not Pritchard. Yeah, so Councillor Pritchard's not present. Um, we haven't heard from him. He may turn up late if he's stuck in traffic, so we'll see. OK, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody uh, that was present at that meeting seen them? Does anybody like to uh, move those minutes? Two hands. Uh, I'll take uh, Councillor Goodall and Councillor Harper as moving and seconding. Uh, all in favour of the minutes? Show of hands there, yep. Those are approved. Remind me to sign those before the end of the meeting. Uh, item three, are there any declarations of interest relating to either application tonight? That's no. Okay, okay on to item four. Uh, we've got two applications up for consideration. Uh, the first one is application number 0117-2022, 16 Wigginton Road. And the second one is 0272-2021, uh, which is land at Dostill Road. Uh, we've got speakers on both applications. There's four speakers on the uh, on the Dostill Road. No, three speakers on the Dostill Road application. And there's two speakers on the uh, on the Wigginton Road application. Uh, so, we'll move to the first application, 0117-2022 for 16 Wigginton Road. Uh, who's presenting on this one, please? Okay, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just before discussing the application in full, just wanted to make members aware of a couple of matters that have arisen since the production of the report. First of all, at Condition 13, uh, just a small technical matter, you'll see that there is a limitation of uh, surface water runoff of climate change for 40%. That is incorrect. Uh, according to the uh, Flood Authority's own guidance, this should be at 30%, so the condition will be tweaked to uh, accommodate for that uh, slight change. And at Condition 17, we've also removed permitted, permitted development rights for any of the houses that are built. We will need to add a, another reason for that, and that is also to include a maintenance to that SUD system. So I just thought I'd make you aware of that uh, fact, that the uh, condition will be changed to reflect that. As for the application itself, uh, this scheme is for 37 dwellings. This is revised from a 40 dwelling scheme initially submitted to the council. The change in uh, dwelling numbers is purely to uh, make the design okay. better, to accommodate a better layout of the site. The site is allocated for development uh, within the ad adopted local plan under HG1 for residential development. And owing to the heavily brownfield nature of the site will represent a marked improved improvement visually to the site because there are a few dilapidated buildings and the condition of the land is um, yeah, not up to standard, so obviously the provision of these houses and landscaping will obviously make a stark improvement to that situation. Technical, technical consultees have reviewed all the submitted information and are happy with the information provided that they will meet the relevant tests and policies within our local plan. Contributions will be made to ecology. Uh, nearly £30,000 will be um, provided by the developer to contribute to ecology off-site. The site con the constraints do not identify enough land for ecology on site, so this £30,000 will be provided for a scheme that we will identify in the, in the near future. A policy compliant affordable mix of housing will also be provided and suitably allocated throughout the site. In other words, they won't be clustered. There's um, obviously three houses towards the south of the site, a single one there uh, isolated at the bottom of the site as well, and then four to the north as well. So pepper potted throughout the development, which is again policy compliant. Again, on design, numerous attempts have been made to secure a high standard of design, which is now very paramount to local plan policy, and just in terms of the layout, and the houses themselves identified on this plan show you an indication of the level of detailing that's gone into the houses, you know, providing entry, interest in, within the site, and obviously on the windows, detailing, etc., which we want to see achieved. And conditions will be made as well to make sure we have a good materials palette that will be submitted um, in due course. 
We've checked distances as well from principal room windows and um, from blank walls and the windows development to make sure they all conform to the relevant guidance in the design SPD. I know there was a few concerns about this raised by residents living nearby, but we have checked the relevant measurements. They all do, do check out, so they are all in conformity with our design SPD on, on, this, on these matters. In terms of technical highway safety matters, uh, we are fortunate today to be um, greeted with well, Mr Mark Evans of County Highways to discuss any sort of highway issues. But in a nutshell, obviously, all the consultees have the, the highways consultee have come back and confirmed that the report submitted with the application is acceptable, and there should be no severe impact to the highway network created by this development. I've been made aware that um, specifically Highway uh, Watling Street um, could have been considered as an, an option for um, access of the site. But since um, since having this discussion, I've been made aware that Watling Street is basically considered too busy. The road network on this street would yeah didn't mean that people will have to wait considerable length of time to access and to leave the to leave the development onto Watling Street. So this is why Watling Street was not considered a suitable option for access. And also, pre-up discussions were had, and um, it was also deemed that uh, again Watling Street was not to be considered to be a suitable access point. So to conclude, the application represents a well-designed housing site on what is a an area where we need some environmental improvement work and it's an allocated site within a local plan where residential development is acceptable and consultees have, have returned comments that um, the application is acceptable in terms of all technical matters. Affordable housing will be provided and a substantial amount of money for ecological net gain is also being committed by the developers and therefore approval is recommended as per the conditions and stipulations within the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Apologies, I think I might have said we're going to the Wigginson Road application, but uh, clearly we're not. Um, it's, uh, we've got some speakers uh, on this application. Um, I've got two objectors and the agent making up the three speakers. Um, I'm going to invite, first of all, Mr Egan, are you present? No. Okay, Mr Egan's not present, so I'll go to uh, Mr Richard Kingston uh, on behalf of Tamworth and District Civic Society. Uh, Richard, do you want to come forward? Yeah. You know how to work the microphone. I hope. <laughs> As you know, uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, you will have three minutes to speak, starting from when you, uh, you utter your first word, and I'll give you a 30-second warning. So over to you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. In the absence of Dr David Biggs, Chairman of Tamworth Civic Society, who is unwell at the moment, I'm stepping into his shoes at the very last minute and speaking as the Civic Society's representative, so please forgive the briefness of my comments. Overall, the Civic Society is very pleased to see that this site and the awful frontage to the old A5 Watling Street is due for renovation. It's hoped that this neglected area can be developed apace and repair years of neglect. Our concerns are around the poor design of the development and the impact on the two gates crossroads. If you look at the plans, you can see there's an awful amount of private drives. Why developments of this nature now seem to favour this as a way of negating a developer's responsibility to build proper roads. No doubt officers will say that they're built to required standard and that's accepted. And whilst that may be true, we are not, we should not be aiming to make developments of this, should we not be aiming to make developments of this nature the very best for residents? and Tamworth as a whole. Go look at some developments of recent years such as the one by the large Morrisons, tall cramped houses, thin roads, parking issues, no front gardens and to top it all, conflict between residents over parking and maintenance to, the, to these private roads. Are we not better than this? Dealing with the second issue of two great crossroads, we all know how bad this is at the moment. Put yet another development so close to it without major mitigation and infrastructure changes and you're asking for trouble. In 2020, researchers at the University of Birmingham identified Tamworth as being in the top 10 of the UK's most polluted towns relative to their size, traffic and population. Air pollution, the highest concentration of nitrogen oxide gases, damage to the lungs, heart, heart arteries and brain. Two Gates is one of the highest pollution areas for miles around and this application wants to increase the standing traffic without doing anything about it. So we at the Civic Society ask you to send this application back to the applicant with the suggestion that the layout of the proposals are improved and some sort of traffic mitigation measures are put in place to protect the Two Gates crossroads. Thank you Mr Chairman. 
Thank you, Mr. Kingston. I ask you to return to your seat. And now the agent, uh, on behalf of the applicant, I've got Catherine O'Toole, please. Okay, make yourself comfortable, and you've got three minutes from when you start speaking. I'll give you a 30 second warning. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to address the committee. This is a full planning application for 37 dwellings, including eight affordable homes. The site is allocated for residential development in the adopted local plan. It forms part of the Wilnercote Regeneration Corridor, which aims to improve the environment around Wilnercote Railway Station. This policy is clear that residential development will be supported in this corridor. The proposal will deliver a mix of housing <coughs> to meet various needs which has been agreed with the officers. The proposed development has been subject to various discussions with the Highway Authority, which resulted in an updated transport assessment being submitted in January to capture layout changes and also including modelling work requested by the Highways Authority, particularly in relation to the traffic light junction at Dostal Road, Watling Street, Tamworth Road. Traffic counts have also been undertaken, including speed data, to inform this assessment. This concluded that the junction has sufficient capacity to accommodate the proposed development. The site layout, including the proposed access, has been designed to comply with the relevant County Council standards. The Highway Authority have confirmed no objections to the proposed development, subject to conditions which have been included. Air and noise concerns have also been raised by local residents. The Environmental Protection Officer has no objections and has responded that the proposal is unlikely to affect air pollution in the local area. The noise assessment recommended suitable mitigation to address the road noise. The design of the proposed development has been subject to extensive discussion with officers and amendments have resulted in a reduction in the number of units proposed from 40 to 37. In particular, the amendments have meant that the proposed gardens meet the council's standards to provide sufficient distance and screening from existing properties, including the adjacent care home. This will safeguard the immunity of both existing and future residents. Existing boundary vegetation is proposed to be retained and enhanced, with new infill plants in proposed where existing vegetation is less mature to provide greater screening. There are two small stretches of private drive proposed in this development, and all dwellings served by private drives have on-plot parking commensurate with the Highway Authority standards. Drainage has been subject to various discussions with the lead local flood authority, who have confirmed they have no objections subject to the conditions which have been included and updated at this committee. The proposed development will require a Section 106 legal agreement to secure the affordable housing and ongoing management of the on-site open space. The agreement also secured a £30,000 contribution to address bribe diversity, which has been agreed with the Council's ecologist. In summary, it has been demonstrated that the proposed development is in accordance with all relevant local and national policy. There are no objections from the statutory consultees. The proposed development will deliver 37 dwellings on a site allocated in the adopted local plan for residential development, including policy-compliant affordable housing. There is no planning reason why permission should not be granted for this application. On this basis, it is commended to the Planning Committee. Bang on three minutes. You've practised that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that concludes the speakers um, on this application. So we'll move to uh, questions uh, of clarification before we go to debate. Has anybody got anything they'd like clarified? I see. Oh, Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I just have some clarification on on the criteria for what is affordable housing? What does this actually mean? It's uh, in figures terms. Can you give me some idea? Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harper. <coughs> Glenn, do you want to? Uh, yep. So 20% of the total dwellings on the site, so I think it's eight, will be affordable housing so this will be housing obviously marketed at a lower rent a lower value so it's achievable for the yeah, lower income earners to purchase a house intermediate housing i don't know if you've heard of that sort of term it's yeah basically housing it will be yeah achievable for the market where yeah sometimes they might be priced out the houses value housing value within the local area might be say you know 250 houses of affordable housing will be obviously a lot less than that and they have to make sure they market it at that price thanks okay cancel up uh, yes, thanks. Thanks very much, Chair. I just want to, but I, I, I'm very well aware of what 
affordable housing is. I was just looking for some sort of um, an idea of how affordable um, is it. I mean, are you looking at a hundred thousand pound house, a fifty thousand pound house, a two hundred thousand pound house? Uh, uh, these these eight units. I need to get a grip on how affordable these places are. Thank I you. Think Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor. But I think the answer to that is probably they're affordable, depending on people's financial circumstances. But <laughs> Glenn, do you want to say anything? Yeah. No. That's exactly it. And um, there will be, generally speaking, they'll offer it up to a housing associations. They will take these houses on. They will look after, make sure, market them in a way that only the people that can afford the houses can actually purchase them. It is very much a, up to the section 106 to iron them details out. Thanks, Glenn. Okay, cancel. Thank you. Well, of course, any house is affordable if you're a millionaire. Yeah. Uh, so it depends on how much money you've got, doesn't it? I th yeah, I, I think we could debate what's affordable and what's not all evening. So well, that's really we'll what I'm trying to yeah. pin down. I don't, I don't think we can answer the question any more than the, the <coughs> Glenn's already answered it, to be Do quite you honest. Do so? I, I don't think we can, no. I don't think there's any more we can add to it. Is the Pardeep? Do you want to say anything? No, I Yeah, um, I was actually going to say, um, with affordable housing, it is very much dependent upon the government's, you know, criteria, um, and it, it's not about how much the house is actually worth, but it's your eligibility criteria. Um, and I haven't got the government's el eligibility criteria, you know, before me. You know, we can certainly, um, you know, email that to you. But it, it is national guidance and it, it talks about um, households who are on, you know, an income, you know, which is a, a low income and there's a threshold. Um, and I can't actually remember, Councillor, what the threshold is, but definitely it is about, um, you know, those households who have actually got an income which is below that particular threshold. But I, we can email the, you know, the figures to you so that you can have a more definitive response as to exactly what the, the criteria of eligibility is for affordable housing. Thanks, Pardee. Um, Anna, uh, Anna, sorry, I think we were talking about training sessions earlier, future training yeah. sessions. Perhaps we could cover this off in a future training session. Thanks. Yeah, I think I don't Thank think you, we Chair. can I any better answer this is a very important stage. point, and I, I agree with you. I think that it ought to be laid down what we're actually talking about rather than just uh, yeah, banning uh, a word. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 I don't think we can question it any further, to be quite honest. Are there, are there any further questions on the um, application? <laughs> Councillor Goodall. Thanks, Chair. Um, as far as the, the areas of incidental open space being maintained by a suitable management company, um, I'm just looking for a bit of clarification how robust that can be made and that might stray into debate a little bit, but I just just a question. We'll we'll ask the question first. We can debate it and debate. Uh, Glenn, Glenn. Oh, pardon, yeah, yeah, go for it. I can, I can with that, um, basically, in terms of the robustness, you know, it will be set out in the section 106 agreement. Um, so the way that it will actually work is is uh, that you know we'll have a plan of the areas that are actually going to be maintained, and you know, and we will say that um, either no occupation or a percentage of occupation cannot take place until those areas are actually transferred to a management company and it's a management company that is actually approved by the council um, and then we will actually you know set conditions um, in the section 106 agreement in terms of the maintenance criteria and the maintenance specification so what we try to do is is to use a section 106 as a tool to make the management of those areas um, as robust as possible Thanks, Pardee. Does that answer that one? Councillor Goodall, thanks. Uh, Councillor Wade. Thanks, Chair. Have we, has a, 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 an ecologist already been on the site to find out what is actually on the site? Because we don't want to be in a situation where we was the other week. That's a fair question. Have, have we had an ecologist visit the site? Yeah, the ecologist report has been produced, and with that there was details of a survey that was undertaken by the relevant ecologist. Thanks, Glenn. So, yeah, we're not going to have a repeat of the previous. Can you put your mic on? Sorry. So, sorry, Chair. So we actually have a list of what animals are actually on that side, eco-wise. If there's anything there, it will be in the report, won't it, Glenn? Yeah, exactly. The report will detail exactly what's on the site, is, how surveys are being conducted. The is the report here? So we can see it? It's on the website still. It will still be available on there for is it? You know, in perpetuity, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it will there. be there. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Wade. Are there any further questions? Councillor Maycock. Sorry, I went blank then. I think who's put their hand up? <laughs> Councillor Maycock. <laughs> um, just looking at the air quality, uh, the borough produced a report in 2020, and the last reading that they had was in 2016 for the air quality for that junction. What's the difference between that reading and the reading that's been taken now? Thanks. Have we got that information available? Um, so just putting my environmental health hat on just briefly, um, we do have uh, nitrogen oxide, so NOx tubes, diffuse tubes around the town to, to measure um, nitrous oxides in the atmosphere. Um, we don't have air, any air quality management areas. We used to, and we used to in this area. That was removed um, probably about five or six years ago, something along those lines, because the air quality had actually improved enough to take that specific set of measures away. Um, we measure it every year, and I, we, we, pro we produce a report every year, so there's probably something more up to date than 2016, definitely. The report was 2020, but the last reading for that report was 2016. Right. Well, we, we do we do measure it um, quarterly, actually, um, and so we will have more up-to-date readings from an environmental health perspective. We're not in a position at this point, is my understanding, of um, redesignating it an air quality management area. Um, my understanding of air quality generally across Tamworth is that it has improved slightly, actually, across Tamworth, and that's a consequence of more sort of hybrid cars and less people commuting at this point um, because of you know the issues that we've had over the last couple of years. So whilst there will be pollution at junctions, because you will get that at any junction where you've got standing traffic, um, you'll have that sort of increase in, in, in uh, emissions at a single point, it's not so significant that it requires a special air quality management area designation, which, which would perhaps give us a different result because we wouldn't want to add to that. But we're not in that space at this point. Thanks, Anna. Get some makeup. Just looking at another concerning figure from that report, uh, 2014 15. Uh, sorry. Have that one. Okay. Yeah, I think that one's passed. Has anybody else got any questions? No, it was right, sorry. Looking at the different column. It, Go for it. Sorry. The um, So basically, from 2014 to 2018, the estimated attributable deaths for particulates has increased. So with you saying that the pollution's gone down, I don't see how that could be the case. Thank you. I can only comment on the, the monitoring that the environmental health team do across Tamworth. You know, there's, there are quite a few diffuse tubes on key junctions around the town centre and elsewhere where we've got key junctions and two gates is one of those areas where it is key. Um, well, there have been issues in the past, but that's not the case at the moment and there's no designation specifically relating to, to air pollution in that location. Thanks, Anna. It does actually say in the report on page 21 uh, that the site's likely to have a vehicle throughput of approximately 80 vehicles. Uh, the traffic from the new development will be unlikely to increase air pollution for the area. Uh, I think we c we've gone on the basis of the, the figures that environmental health are now taking, I think, that Anna's just referred to. So I think I think that answers the question, but I'm not sure it's the answer, the, the answer that you necessarily wanted. So, 37 properties, is that two spaces per property? It will be, yeah. I can see nods from further down the line. Does that answer the, uh, that answer the questions for now? Yeah. All right. Are there any more questions of clarification? No. We'll move into debate then. Does anybody want to start? Councillor Greatrix. Thank you. Um, as Councillor Maycox already indicated about pollution, the agent said there won't be any extra pollution. 
if there are two car spaces, and maybe more, uh, I don't see how 80 or more cars will not be adding to pollution, especially, as it was said earlier, about standing cars. But if there's 80 cars coming and going to work, taking kids to school, going shopping, going to all sorts of... How can that not cause pollution? How can it not? OK. We've moved on. We're into debate now, so we're going to have to debate. <laughs> not, I can't answer that, to be honest. <laughs> it was it's meant to be a rhetorical question. Yeah, really. yeah. Councillor Harper. Well, I'd like to fully endorse uh, Councillor Greatrex and what she says, because uh, it's inconceivable that you can have eight more cars pouring out of the morning and no more pollution. It's, it's obvious. Um the A5 is becoming a real problem, and it's going to get even worse and worse as years go by. We're in the process of hundreds of houses going up at Mile Oak. All those are going to be piling up past two gates, past this area. This area of town is probably the most polluted in the town. Um, <coughs> I think local people will tell you that <laughs> without any uh, statistics. Um, the Development as such, I think, is welcome, to be welcome, because this is a particularly scruffy area and needs needs to be upgraded. Uh, when we do upgrade um, in future, and I'm hopeful that other councillors will agree, we need to be very, very conscious of quality. Uh, when you read these, this report particularly, um, you will see words very, very frequently used, sufficient, standard provision acceptable. We need to raise our our aim and get more quality. We've become a very unbalanced town and we don't have higher quality properties in abundance. So um, from my particular point of view I think this is probably an acceptable development but I think we have got to lo monitor it very carefully and look to the future because um, we've got a lot of problems piling up <coughs> and they're going to hit us in the future very, very shortly. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Does anybody else want to speak at this stage? Councillor Cook, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, it's reiterating on that last one. Although it's an acceptable uh, development, I would want to be careful as well. Mainly because, I mean, I have to um, uh, uh, head up that way anyway. And in the rush hour especially, that area is an absolute... Uh, kind of nightmare. Even if we're having access onto the Dostil on the road, and most of the times I've first uh, in the um, uh, uh, b b b traffic up there, um, kind of backed up really far anyway, and if. We're having um, works um, uh, vehicles up there as well. It's <coughs> for the area, yeah, but it's the actual infrastructure. It's we have to be really uh, kind of careful. That's me. Even um, uh, minor road works there in the past on that same area. It's been absolute kind of mayhem up there. So, though in hindsight, the development is all right. <coughs> that access, especially with the um, work, uh, kind of vehicles, even after it's been. Um, trying to build it we just have to be really careful with it i'd say thank you thanks councillor cook 
Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, th I think it's a good development in a location that, that sort of makes good use of the existing sort of um, land that appears to have been derelict for a number of a number of years. Um, it's it's in the local plan, and that's our our sort of first sort of port of call, I guess. Um, I think as far as the traffic is concerned, uh, I think we have to be careful that we assume that everyone, in, everyone goes out at the same time in the morning and through that junction, because obviously they could go in a different direction. Um, the, the, the only sort of little concern, and as I, as I alluded to um, in the question that I asked earlier, was that the the open space management sort of because I think we've seen on on, on previous uh, developments where perhaps the open space hasn't been managed as well as it could have been. Um, so just really looking for some reassurances in how that can be made a bit more robust. But but I'm currently happy to support the development. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. Anybody else want to add anything? Councillor Maycock. Like many of the others tonight, I feel that it is a needed development in the needed area. Uh, like a few have said already, it's been it's been like that way for a very long time, and uh, is an eyesore. Um, if there has been no increase in the particulates, then I don't see why not. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ford. Thank you very Again, much, Chairman. Welcome back to uh, you. Sorry? Welcome back to you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, as you can imagine, Mr Chairman, this is very hard for me to uh, think about this with just my Borough Council hat on, um, but I've come into this with uh, an open mind and uh, not interfered from my role in the County Council point of view whatsoever. I haven't even had any conversations with the highways team regarding it. Uh, so, uh, it, from listening to this, yeah. There are, I'm well aware that uh, there are major issues uh, surrounding the um, the, the two goats uh, junction. Uh, it's not been, uh, it's not a new thing, um, um, but this development, from my perspective, is one of the ones that uh, the evils uh, are outweighed by the, incredibly by the pros. This is a, an unused development um, that's been vacant for numerous years. Um, very happy to support it this evening and if there's no further uh, anybody wishing to debate I'll happily move it with the uh, 17 recommendations second conditions Thank you Councillor Ford, that's been moved um, I don't know, I haven't asked yet <laughs> Does anybody want to second it? <laughs> Councillor Goodall I would have proposed it but happy to second Thank you Councillor Goodall Sorry <laughs> I need to ask for a second or first before we can identify them. <laughs> Just a point of order. Right, we've got a we've got a, a, a proposal there. Um, we've got a proposal moved and seconded. Um, I think we move to a vote on that basis. Um, all in favour, all those in favour of that motion to uh, to accept the application. Against, please. And that is total, there is 12 here, so that's, uh, that application is passed by 10 votes to 2. Thank you. Take a brief pause and we'll go to application number 0117-2022-16 uh, Wigginton Road. We'll just give it a few seconds before the uh, so the room can clear at the back there. Okay. Glenn, are you presenting this one again? I am indeed, yep. So, yep, no updates for this one. This application is a resubmission of a previous application 0017-2021 for a similar development uh, that was refused on the 5th of November uh, on the grounds that scale, bulk and massing the proposal uh, combined with its setting would create harm to the significance of the Grade 2 listed chapel located to the southwest of the site. So we're dealing with a 
a new house in the rear of 16 Willigington Road. So the property will actually be on Ashby Road itself, which is the road to the south of the site. The application, as I say, is a resubmission for a previous scheme for a dwelling. However, there's a number of changes that have been made to the, to the scheme. These include making the whole dwelling 2 metres narrower. It also includes moving it an additional 1.4 metres away from the chapel, and therefore 0.5 metres closer to Ashby Road. It is uh, slightly taller on the Ashby Road side by 0.15 metres. It is 1.3 metres shorter on the chapel side, and a double, a double garage that was originally proposed has also been removed. So as before, the proposal has been consulted on by a number of consultees, and these have come back as they are happy with the proposal. All the reports have been deemed to be acceptable. Um, including this is the conservation officer who obviously therefore is vital for an application where a heritage asset is um, you know is within close proximity such as this chapel their view is because of the concealed location of this chapel um, the positive element of it is its setting and this will remain unchanged as a result of the scheme furthermore the soft landscaping is also an important element of the setting and this will remain unchanged within the curtilage and directly adjacent to the curtilage of the listed building Finally, the use of a natural clay tile is, and any other further conditions on facing materials to be agreed is also a way of um, providing an acceptable form of development on the site. Therefore, in their view, the application would provide a less than substantial harm or a low impact to the significance of the listed building. And therefore, the desirable objective um, within Section 66 of the Planning, Listed Building and Conservation Act would be achieved and therefore represents an acceptable form of development despite the conflict with the, uh, the, the, the chapel. Therefore the balance is that the proposal is acceptable and a sustainable form of development in conformity with the local plan and relevant policies within the MPPF. Thank you. Thank you Glenn. Um, we do have uh, two speakers on this application. I'll invite first of all Miss Bev Haynes to come forward. You'll have heard me say but as with the previous speakers make yourself comfortable uh, you've got three minutes from the time you start speaking and you'll get a 30 second warning thank you i'm gonna wear my glasses <laughs> <clears throat> sorry <laughs> all right thank you very much for listening to me um on this occasion i've written a 17 page comment much to the um, horror of debbie so sorry about that um, and enclosed uh, diagrams, photographs and various bits and befores and afters um, to try and uh, show that this isn't an insignificant impact on us at 23 Ashby Road. In its current position and orientation, it destroys the reasons that we chose our home in the first place. And I'm not going to comment on the um, impact on the chapel because I know the other speaker will do a better job than I will. But we are bothered about that as well. Um, we currently enjoy a light, airy, private, sunlit, pleasant and relaxing home with a garden full of the same qualities. It's our amenity and this build ruins it. Our house has sat in its open setting uninterrupted for decades. It gives us the private and relaxing amenity space so vital for the mental health and well-being of the three adults who live there and share it 24-7, 365 days of the year. Two of us are retired. If this plan must be passed and if the Spittle Chapel wasn't there, we would request that it be flipped over and moved as far away from us as possible and angled more away from us and that would actually mitigate some of the concerns that we have that are very uh, upsetting. We see the building is slightly shorter now because it's been moved closer to us um, and the positive effects of this slight reduction in length have been nullified. It still blocks out virtually all of our winter sunlight that our home currently benefits from. Um, loss of sunlight and loss of amenity are both considerations that we beg not to be overlooked on this occasion, please. It will spoil our home and it will damage our health. It's going to make us feel enclosed, overlooked, overshadowed, shaded, and there's a devastating loss of sunlight to the main habitable rooms. Front and back windows mentioned in the report as main windows for those rooms are not in respect of winter sun. The rear one is northeast facing, so it has absolutely no bearing on that at all. And the front one um, gets about 12 to 15 minutes of sunlight, if we're lucky in the winter um, the effect on SAD mental health and well-being by the loss of sunlight to these main habitable rooms is going to be awful tall screening plants don't exist in respect of winter sunshine because they're deciduous so they don't actually block or shade our property not at any time of year um, mention is also made that um, we are higher yes we are but our ground floor rooms are still at the ground level 
they're not higher because the land is they're still down there being thoroughly shaded by everything um, there is an obscured side window facing us which doesn't prevent loss of privacy but our back garden seconds. is at the back and that certainly is affected very badly by the windows um, there's also air pollution, loss of fresh air and breezes. The distance, by the way, between the entrance to the property and the entrance to the Quem School is actually 28.98 yards, not 45. It's a lot closer than you think. Um, and the garden is a bat foraging area for a protected species, which uh, one of our neighbours has even brought a bat detector because he can then watch and listen to the bats foraging over this area at his leisure. Just about done you three minutes, you say. Well done. <laughs> And I've probably missed quite a lot of, but thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll invite Richard Kingston forward again. As before, your three minutes will start when you start speaking. Thank you, Mr Chairman. In what capacity do I address you tonight? With fingers in so many pies, it's easy to misunderstand. As a past trustee of the Peel Society, past chairman of Tamworth Heritage Trust, and current vice chairman of the Civic Society, it's easy to become confused. I'll make it clear for you, though. I'm objecting to this application as a private citizen who's received about 100 or more comments from concerned residents about this refreshed application. Back in November of last year, this committee made the right decision in refusing the original application. Now we have a new or resubmitted application, and what has changed? Very little, despite what your planning officers may want you to believe. You turned down this application in November on the basis that a building in the location suggested would have posed a great harm to Spittle Chapel and its setting. Let us not forget that this chapel was built in 1274 by Sir Philip de Marmion, the fifth and last Baron de Marmion, who was King's champion at the time. After the castle and the church, there isn't another building left in the town with a pedigree as high, and yet your officers want to plant a four-bedroomed house in its curtilage. And I use the word curtilage as for a particular reason, because several years ago, one of your officers used the word curtilage as a reason for not putting one of my public defibrillators on the side of a 1960s ropey brick wall next to the Masonic rooms. Yet still, conservation and planning officers think it's okay to build this house so very close to the chapel. This planning report does a great disservice to the chapel. Paragraph 6.3.2 onwards don't even scratch the surface of the significance of the building. Last time this came before you, you heard from John Harper that this site was used to have plague victims, hence Spittle Chapel being, or Spittle being short for hospital. I went off to check and John is spot on. Yet your new conservation officer doesn't even acknowledge this. Paragraph 6.3.8, in sheer desperation, points out that yet another new conservation officer has reached the same conclusion as the one back in the autumn. Yet was this a desk analysis? Did the new conservation visit officer visit the site? Have they done their research into the history of the location? I doubt it. Its conclusion in paragraph 7.1, officers proudly state that the revised proposal is now 1.5, or as I've just heard, 1.4 metres, further away from the chapel. whoop de doo how generous to change things the equivalent, the length of the desk in my office. The issue here is in relation to the sanctity and curtilage of the site, as pointed out in your original re reasons for refusal. Building anything on this plot of land would be akin seconds. to building a block of flats near the castle mound. Oh, but the council have already done that, haven't they? Learn, ladies and gentlemen, from the past, and look forward and protect what we have for the future. Don't repeat past mistakes. You don't have to blindly follow officers' suggestions. You are here to add conscience to decision-making, to add the human side to things. Otherwise, there's no point in this committee being present. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Five seconds to spare. Well done. You can uh, make yourself comfortable back in your seat. Uh, thank you. Uh, right, that concludes the speakers uh, on this application. So uh, we'll move to questions, and it's questions of clarification, please. So, Councillor Goodall first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's a question I raised on the previous application, but I'm going to repeat it. Um, the buildings, could, could we have the map or the picture up, please? Do you want the aerial shot? Yeah. Yeah, 
So the other buildings along the sort of three open sides of um, of the chapel, uh, I'm assuming that they're private houses. How how old are they? Sort of when were they built, and what distance are they from the chapel, please? Glenn, over to you. Yeah, we believe it's a similar distance to the current proposal. Um, we've not measured it, unfortunately. So it's a detail we could find out, but yeah, we would be of the view they're similar to where you know, the house is proposed here. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and sort of what sort of age were, are they? Oh, yeah, sorry, 1930s or something? Yeah, we're looking at range, but yeah, 1940s would be our, our, I guess. That sounds about right, to be fair. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. I've got Councillor Cook next. Thank you. Um, just a bit of a um, kind of question, actually. Um, before I lost last year, I was at one of the hub meetings, and we had an application in. And again, that was kind of based around a, a, a historic area. On that application, I asked if we let that go, um, would it have any other effects on, on, on any other applications around any uh, historic areas of interest which we have? That answer was yes. We also let it go. Um, looking at this, if you don't know what the application is, I'll to let you know anyway, but would that application have any effect on this if we say no? That was Councillor Cook. Paddy? Well. Chair, I was actually going to say that um, you know, we really have to determine this application on its merits um, with regard to the information that you have before you in the report. Um, so it, it's not really reasonable for us to you know, comment on other applications. It is a case of just looking at the facts before you and looking at this application and determining it on its merits. Thanks, Paddy. So it's, it's, it's a case of look at this yeah. on its, in its um, isolation, if you like. Okay, your mic's still open. Yeah. Um, for the reason that I obviously asked was because I asked if it would have any issues with any uh, uh, any of recent applications which we have in the future. So obviously that was just that. I was asking for that anyway. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think you have to d you'd determine each one on its own merits, wouldn't you? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we have Councillor Maycock next. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one question, uh, well, one question which may lead on to another one. Uh, low impact, is that negative impact or positive impact? The term is less than significant. So obviously in terms of um, assessing impacts on heritage assets, it ranges from significant to um, yeah, less than significant. Um, so in the case of this one, um, sorry, just reading it. Uh, do, 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 yeah, less. Oh, sorry, substantial harm. So less than substantial. So, yeah, substantial being the most equivalently, you know, refuse at all costs. Where well, being less than substantial, you know, there's recognised to be some harm, but because it's less than substantial, we deem that in this instance there are other compelling reasons to approve the scheme. If that makes sense. Thanks, Councillor Mako. Is that? Uh, I just I ask that one question because. Um, the last time this was in front of us, I mentioned that it didn't follow EN6 because it says, where possible, enhanced. So that still isn't following that policy, is it? No, but I, if I'm wrong, I might talk to Debbie about this one, but there's also a need to preserve as well. And I think in our view, the development would be preserving. Yeah, preserving the conservation, well, preserving the area. Okay. But there's no or in there, that there's no sections of, they all have to follow each other. So, assess should be protected, including its setting, will be protected, conserved, and where possible, enhanced. If there's still a low impact, all of them three things aren't being met. Yeah. Yeah, that's acknowledged, I think. Yeah. Thanks. I've got Councillor Harper next, please. Have you got a question? 
It was just actually to um, correct uh, uh, on the on the age of the surrounding properties. The properties are there are none from the 1940s. Uh, they are post World War One up to the 1930s. There is one building there from the 1970s, which was built on the site of a Victorian um, ecclesiastical. Have we got uh, a question coming out of this? Um, I'm j I'm just wondering if um, if the surrounding property is a particular um, reason for accepting this application, the fact that um, houses are surrounding three sides. The one side that it hasn't got anything um, is is where we're going to fill in. Is this is this something we can look at from an, uh, a planning point, that we are surrounding what is Tamworth's arguably its oldest building and it will be surrounded by modern buildings is this a planning matter that we can address and it's, it's certainly of concern to me is it I a planning that, concern i think that's something we, we address in debate really isn't it uh, I mean, the, 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 the question i'm not saying i like it particularly but the the, the the i think we've kind of covered the fact that the report rec suggests it should be recommended for acceptance but we, we're treating this in isolation I, s I suppose we're not looking at the other three and determining whether they should have been built in the past is, is that the, the angle you're going from basically what i'm saying mistakes of the past should not be repeated we just because people made errors years ago doesn't mean that we have to carry on making them yeah don't disagree uh with that but we're determining this one not what went on in the past so I'm, I'm only referring to this one, Joe. Yeah, OK. I, uh, Anna? Um, on, only to say that uh, Glenn, when he gave his presentation a minute ago, um, talked around the considerations of the conservation officer that we have. Um, and her considerations were that the setting is already compromised because of the existing development. Uh, which is seen on that on that picture because three of the four sides already have houses in very close proximity, um, and that's that's her consideration in arriving at the significance and impact of a development in that green space currently in that garden, um, and the arrival at her conclusion um, that it's acceptable in planning or heritage terms. Thanks, Anna. So effectively, what we're saying, it's okay to make it more compromised. Go. What, what she's saying is it is already compromised. So the addition of a false dwelling in that position um, is acceptable for that reason. It is not compromised from the north at the moment, but it will be if we allow this um, application to go through. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can get more of an answer than we've already got Let, let's can we move on and, and then debate this okay. in debate i think because we're not going to get to achieve anything by going over the same ground i don't think councillor gray tricks you had your hand up next well i did but i was actually going to say uh, very much what uh, councillor harper said um that i can't understand how those old houses could got a permission from a previous planning committee to to be there and we should not repeat that mistake Let's, let's get into that in debate. Have you got a question for the officers at the moment? I'll leave it for debate. All right. Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, sorry if I've missed it in the report, but what use is the chapel as far as um, do, do people use it for, for any sort of meeting space or has it got any facilities, water, electricity, any of that sort of thing? I'm just interested to know. I can partially answer that. It's used, it is used by, uh, it's part of the Wigginton Church and it is used, I know, for for obviously small services because it's a small chapel. Um, I don't think there's any mains water to it because they were trying to get a, a the mains water installed. They were trying to run a, a, a an appeal to get the, the enough money to get mains water into it. Uh, I can't remember if it's got, I think it's got electricity into it, but there's, there's certainly no mains water, but it is used for small services by um, 
uh, people it's attached to Wigginton Church. I can give that much of an answer. I don't know if the officers can add any more to it. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm right. There's regular services there. How regular, I don't know, but off the top of my head, but I know there's regular services there. So, yeah, it is used. It's not an empty building, empty shell that sits there unused. Councillor Wade. Thanks, Chair. <coughs> I know we got to uh, debate this one on, on its merit, but the previous application, was that refused just because of the, the vast scale of the building? No, I can go back. I'll go back to the previous application, and, to, uh, and you'll have to forgive me. It's quite a long answer, but I'll read the I'll read the reason for refusal um, from the previous meeting, so that everybody's uh, I've got their memory refreshed. So it is quite long, so bear with me. The scale, bulk, and massing of the proposed dwelling combined with its siting would create harm to the significance of the Grade Two listed building known as Spittal Chapel of St James and a designated heritage asset. The proposed development would also hinder application uh, appreciation of its significance by altering the significant relationship of the chapel to its surroundings and adversely affect its setting. The proposed works would therefore result in material harm to the Grade 2 listed building and its setting contrary to policy EN6 protecting the historic environment as set out in the Tamworth Local Plan 2006-2031. The provisions of Chapter 16, Conserving and Enhancing the Historic Environment of the National Planning Policy Framework 2021 and Section 16 and 66 of the Planning Act 1990. I don't expect everyone to remember all those bits and pieces of legislation, but that, that was the reason for refusal. So it was all to do with the effect um, on the chapel. That, that was the reason for refusal previously. Mm. And... Am I correct now that all they've done is moved it up a bit and shortened it by a metre and as per the report? Bit. So it's it's been altered by. Uh, can we clarify the the distances again, Glenn? Please. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a red lines around here. You can see where the existing property was. So there, there's a bit there. So they moved it in, obviously further away from the chapel. So that's the existing site, and then that's where it is. And then there, the bullet points there show some of the measurements. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that's on there. Yeah. Super. Thanks, Councillor Wade. Are there any further questions before we move into debate? Councillor Maycock. Uh, just one uh, clarification. Um, when he was giving the report, you mentioned that the garage had been taken away. I'm sure that I read in the report that it's only been detached from the property, so it is there is still a double garage there. It's just been detached from the property. Is that? Um, can we just have clarification on the garage? The detached garage is no longer part of the proposal either. It is purely just off-street parking, as indicated here. Apologies if there's confusion in that, but no, there's no garage at all now. So no garage and full parking spaces? Yep. Cheers. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for confusion. Any further questions before we go on to, uh, on to debate? No. Okay. We'll move on to debate. Who'd like to uh, start, please? Councillor Greatrix. Thank you. Uh, one thing that's not been mentioned is um, how very eloquently the lady spoke against this and her quality of life. And as I understand it, we all have a right to a good quality of life. It was said at the original application for this that the windows at the side of that house had, um, I think it was called secondary windows. Well, whether they're secondary or not, they're still entitled to have light coming into them. And uh, I don't think that we've taken that little aspect of this application into consideration tonight. And my other concern is very much the church. Um, and I said earlier, my um, comment should have been in the debate that we should not be repeating mistakes of the past. This church is a unique building and it should stay a unique building. And I don't think that we should build to the north uh, of the church which would, in my opinion, completely spoil it. Also, was there not talk at the first application about the possibility that the, the lawn of that house w might be a burial ground for that church? And as I understand it, it was basically turned down on the basis of that, that, that heritage to do with the church. It doesn't matter about 
proximity to houses and roads. So it was about the heritage of that church. Thanks, Councillor Greystreet. Councillor Cook, please. Thank you. Um, the way I sort of see it, and kind of going back off the other um, one I asked, having this independently, as far as I'm aware, the three um, criteria haven't really been met, as we've already um, realised, etc. And with the old uh, kind of report still um, going and going against it because of the actual area that it's in and what's so around it and what it uh, will affect, etc. I don't kind of think that the changes they've kind of made actually contributing to uh, helping that. Um, I mean, I f fully understand that the applicant obviously wants to make these extra changes um, to coincide with that, but I don't kind of think they've actually kind of managed it yet, and as we work, everyone else has also um, uh, 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 spoke, done about, and obviously their um, concerns, especially. Um, uh, with mistakes in the uh, kind of past, etc. I, but I don't um, think I can accept this literally as it sort of stands. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cook. Councillor Wade, please. Thanks, Chair. <coughs> Just to reiterate what Councillor Cook. Cook said, I think what they've done is just jumbled a few things around to get to 180 instead of having three three darts in the, in the middle. And uh, I don't think the three, the three things have definitely been met to what Councillor uh, Maycock has brought up either. So I just think they've jumbled it around in, instead of going for Three, three trebles, they've gone for a treble, a single and a double top and it ain't washing with me. Thank you. Thanks for that. Councillor Wade, I like the, like the analogy, I think. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that one in planning before. <laughs> that goes down in my book of original uh, original comments in planning. Uh, Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, again, here we are trying to save Old Tamworth from uh, from being lessened, if we like, not destroyed in this case, but certainly lessened. And um, as we've already said, this is probably, if not the oldest, it's the second oldest building. It's older than the church. It's 100, 100 200 years older than Tamworth Parish Church. It's stretching right the way back to our very earliest days. It was the first building you came to when you came into Tamworth. It was the first thing you ever saw. Long, long before any of the other housing came there. But if we're looking at this report, the problem we've got here is scale, isn't it? It's the fact that the building that is proposed is just not of a suitable scale. Um, we see here on the, uh, the local plan, character and appearance. The appearance of a development is a material planning consideration and in general terms the design of a proposal should not adversely impact on the character and appearance of the wider street scene. It goes on, policy EN5 design and new development states that developments should be of a scale, layout, form and massing which conserves or enhances the setting of development and utilize materials and overall detailed design which conserves or enhances the context of the development. 
proposals should respect and where appropriate reflect existing local architecture scale the worst well the most obvious example of building out of scale in Tamworth are the Litchfield Street flats which were built adjacent to the um, moat house which was ruined or the setting was ruined by the scale a totally un inappropriate scale of the flats that's what we're looking at here we're looking at a tall house that's going to overlook a tiny chapel which may be only small but holds a huge huge importance in Tamworth's history um, the local plan the EN6 states that where proposals affect designated heritage assets including conservation areas listed buildings scheduled monuments and non-designated heritage assets it should be clearly demonstrated how the significance including its second uh, in setting will be protected conserved and where possible enhanced how in god's name is this enhancing such a site such an important site ah the report here I'm only going from the report which has been written by by the officers the historic story its rare survival and its surviving fabric are the key elements of its special significance and there is little remaining in terms of its setting which contributes to its significance or an understanding of its significance so what are we going to do about that we're going to make it worse we're not going to improve it which is what I would like to see happen we're going to make it worse it was mistakes were made in the past we're gonna do them again how brilliant is that uh, uh, the proposed house um, it's the height of the property I think which is the the major problem and on this particular report it says the height of the property on the side closest to the chapel has re been reduced from 6.3 meters to 7.5 meters now, how you can reduce something from 6.3 meters to 7.5 meters is beyond me. I don't know if anybody can uh, can explain that one to me. It's too tall. It's too big. It will overpower. It will overshadow, and it will dwarf the existing historical monument. Um, another error on this particular report is the the entrance to Landau 40 Academy, Quems is approximately 45 your yards northeast of the property it isn't it's about 10 yards if that uh, policy en6 protecting the historic environment states that where archaeology may be lost through development there will be a requirement for archaeological recording to be undertaken by an appropriate professional and entered in the historic environment record the archaeology what archaeology are we likely to find here this is the oldest chapel the oldest church building in Tamworth what are we likely to find here I suggest we might find a few graves because as we uh, already alluded to the chairman has already said to us this was the place where Tamworth's plague victims were taken and where they were presumably buried um, I wasn't around to report on it at the time, not far off, but uh, it's obvious that this was going to be the case. A few yards away from where we are was uh, at the Fountain Junction. I don't know if everyone is aware of the Fountain Junction. Um, that was the site of the Tamworth Scaffold. That's where we used to string up wrongdoers, uh, right at the junction of the Cumberford and the Ashby Road. A few yards from this building. Where would those poor wretches have been planted. That's right. I know, I know it's relevant, but can we stick to the site of the application, please? The, the point I'm making is that this is probably a graveyard. Should we be building a four-bedroom, a huge four-bedroom detached house on a graveyard? No one knows what's under the ground there. It's never been archaeologically um, surveyed. Who knows what's there? Um certainly the, the the need for further archaeological recording certainly needs to be taken by a fully independent authority 
not someone who's been employed by the, the developers. Totally, totally independent. Um, just to conclude, um, this, I can't begin to tell you how upset I am about the fact that this, this wonderful old building, this wonderful piece of old Tamworth, could be effectively hidden from view, trapped behind a wall or walls of modern masonry. Is that what we want? Would it not be far more sensible to um, perhaps persuade the developer to put a bungalow here? A low-level bungalow that hasn't got great looming roofs and gables and windows staring out at the Spittal Chapel and the neighbours. To me, that would be a far better and more suitable use for this particular plot, if indeed it has to be built on at all. So, um, Chairman and, and fellow councillors, I'm, I'm of a total opinion that this should be uh, turned down uh, on the basis that it is totally out of scale and would seriously impair a hugely important Tamworth heritage, piece of Tamworth heritage. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Harper. Passionate as always. Thank you. Councillor Goodall. Thank, thank you, Chair. And, and yeah, I would, I would echo your thoughts on um, Councillor Harper's passionate, passionate speech, indeed. Um, I, I'd certainly hear the views of other members of the committee, um, but I'm, I'm yet to be convinced that we're not sort of preserving the condition, the position, the, the heritage of the, of the chapel. Um, uh, I, I don't see how another another property around the chapel actually you know it, 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 you can't see the chapel from the I've just driven by on Google Street View and you can't see the, the chapel it's it's um, it's shrouded in view by trees that have been there for some 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 years um, we're here to judge this application Councillor Harper raises a very interesting point about a different design of, 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 of property, but we're here to judge this, this application. I think the application fits well within the street. Um, it, it sort of echoes similar sorts of properties, large properties. Um, I don't see a planning reason to refuse. I'm happy to support the proposal. Thanks, Councillor Goodall. Um, Seeing Councillor Maycott's hand, I'm going to go next, though, if I may. Uh, indulge me. Um, I'm disappointed because we talked about this application. Um, I've sat thinking about this all day and I've listened to what's been said tonight. And I, I'm disappointed because it was refused back in November, I think it was. Um, for, and the reason that I read out is long, so I'm not going to read it again. But the reason that I read, out, read it out, uh, the reason I read it out, was so that everybody could understand why we refused it. And for me, moving this property a metre here and a metre there, and altering the height slightly, and, and all that kind of thing, for me, hasn't dramatically altered the position uh, that we were in in November. It's still a house that's going to um, affect the chapel, and I accept that there's buildings on three of the four sides already. I accept that, but we're not here to to judge past mistakes, if you like. If those if applications for houses in those positions had come now, would we have accepted them? Possibly not in the uh, in the current times. But there they are. The houses are there. Judging this application, I'm disappointed that something has come to us and it's been moved by a metre. Is it making it wholly different from the application that we heard in November? And for me, it's not. Um, I moved refusal of this back in November and indulge me because I'm going to move refusal again. And I'm going to move refusal for exactly the same reason as we did in November because for me, moving the property by metre doesn't make a jot of difference. Um, and still, we're, we're 
harming the the significant i think it affects the significance of the of the building which is spittal chapel of st james so i'm going to move it for refusal and it will be for exactly the same reason that it, i moved it um back in november thank you councillor maycock was next i think um looking back at the previous application i give myself three tests uh, which i've spoken about earlier and this application hasn't changed any of them free tests. They've still gone against them free tests. Uh, so simply on that, exactly the same as last time. I can't accept it. And I'd like to uh, second if I can, Chair, please. Thanks, Councillor Maycott. Um, we've got a, a motion for refusal that's been proposed and seconded. So we therefore move to a vote. Um, all those in favour of refusing the application for uh, the reason I'll, I'll, I'll abbreviate the, 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 the wording, but it will be the same wording as last time in totality. It'll be, so uh, we're refusing it because the scale, bulk and massing of the proposed dwelling combined with its siting will create harm to the significance of the Grade 2 listed building known as Spittal Chapel of St James and as a designated heritage asset. Um, the rest of the wording is as I read out earlier, but that's in brief. Uh, the reason for refusal so that's that's the reason it's been moved and seconded so we move to a vote all those in favour of refusal that's nine in favour against. against any abstentions one abstention two abstentions sorry two abstentions which makes a total of 12. Yep. So uh, nine votes in favour of refusing the application for uh, the wording that I've used, but the, the totality of the wording okay. is as per the previous application, please. That application has been refused. Okay. That concludes the business of tonight's meeting. Um, can I just ask members of the committee just to stay for a couple of minutes after Jody's ceased the recording, please? <laughs>